Maya, thank you very much for sitting down with ITV News. You're back at your old school in Bristol. What exactly are you doing here? I'm here on a school tour at the moment. It's the third school that we've been to. So we started in Sheffield, then Manchester, then Liverpool, and back to my old school, Cotton. And it basically came about because I get so many messages from young people in my DMs on Instagram and on Twitter, asking for advice about things and asking how I'd cope with certain things. And I thought back to when I was in school and I didn't really have many people that I could connect to come in to speak. There was never anybody that looked like me or anybody that did a job that I wanted to do. And so the aim of it is just to kind of round up this troop of amazing people I know from different walks of life, different backgrounds, different ethnicities, uh, different shapes and sizes, and to talk about our experiences and open up about mental health and hopefully somebody in the audience at any of these schools that we go to can connect to one of us and leave that room inspired. That's the aim. You've always been very open about your background and your uh, growing up in Bristol. Mm -hmm. How has that impacted your mental health as a whole and who you are now? Um, I'd say growing up in Bristol literally has made me the person I am 100%. I love Bristol. I have like not a bad word to say about it. I always say that Bristol, I probably would have still lived there if it wasn't for job opportunities in London. Um, but in terms of like my life so far impacting my mental health, I mean, it's only really since I was in the spotlight kind of world or have however many eyes there are online looking at you that you actually start to feel a little bit anxious and you start doubting yourself a little bit and maybe there's a lot of pressure online to be the perfect person and if you're not perfect like me it can get a bit overwhelming sometimes when you're trying to be this and one thing I've always done is try to show every aspect of my life and try to show me when I'm glamorous and doled up on telly but also me when I'm rough and I'm not feeling my best and be open with that so that if there are young people following me they can see that no matter how perfect my life can look at some points I'm just as normal I have down days I have mornings where I wake up and I don't feel like I want to do anything I can look rough if I don't have a glam team of 10 and just try and be as honest and as open about myself and my life as possible so that yeah they're not looking online and thinking oh gosh I'd never be like that because they, they can be like that. Do you think young people now with social media are even more susceptible to feeling anxiety or nervousness or, or jealousy in some form through seeing these um, kind of hyper um, idealistic views of life on Instagram and Twitter and that sort of thing? Yeah, I think so. I mean, when I was in school, the only thing I could compare myself to was like maybe Beyonce on the cover of a shiny magazine. And that didn't ever really make me feel much pressure because it was like, that's a magazine, that's glossy. You separated it quite a lot. Whereas now everybody has the same apps. Everybody has the same access to phones and cameras. And you could see a famous person with a selfie and think, why don't mine look like that? Not knowing that there's a team of 10 behind that photo that have edited it and added all lighting and hair and makeup and things like that. And I think, yeah, it's just about reminding people, young people especially, about the reality of online, like Instagram is literally a highlight reel. That is people's best moments. That's not them when they're crying. That's not them when they've woken up and had a bad day or when somebody's passed away and they have to deal with that. It's literally just them showing their best selves. And yeah, I think the more that you drill that into people and hopefully remind young people that it's not real, it's just the best bits. Uh, it could be a lot easier to deal with, I suppose, and it would take away some of that pressure. I read your Vogue article recently, which I really enjoyed, and you were very open about how you are and how you're upbringing affected you and how you went through some really tough times especially in Bristol growing up. Mm -hmm. um, do you think it's important that people are able to talk about those things with the openness that you are and reflect on them as um, building blocks to success in some way, going through really tough times so it makes you appreciate the good ones? Yeah, definitely. I mean, not everybody's as open as I am. I think I'm quite an open person and that's probably helped me quite a lot throughout life where I've been able to speak to people around me, so people close to me. and. Speaking really does help, as cliche as it sounds. Like, once you're carrying all your own issues on your own head, you, you feel kind of trapped in them. But as soon as you open up to somebody, it's like, okay, like, it's a weight off almost. And, and getting understanding from other people and knowing that, you know, through me speaking out about things that I've gone through, there's so many people that have reached out to me and said, I'm going through exactly that. And like, reading how you have made it out of it and you don't feel low anymore uh, based on whatever happened to you in the past, like, that's inspired me. And I think the more people that are brave enough maybe to speak about, their personal situations the better, but I'm not naive to the fact that not everybody wants to broadcast their personal life problems. And I just say that if you can speak about it, do. If you can't, just make sure you speak to somebody, whether it's publicly or not. I think getting things out of your chest and out of your mind and into the air helps everybody. And is it important that people see the difficult times as part of who they are rather than something to bottle up and try and ignore and put away in a corner? A hundred percent. I'd say never let anything that's happened in your past define you. When I was younger, I didn't see anybody in the media or in the spotlight that maybe had a father that went to jail or somebody that passed away at a young age that they 
spoke about and I remember feeling like, well, oh, maybe I'm just not like part of that crowd or maybe I wouldn't fit in because I'm not from a rich background or I haven't had that level of education or whatever it was. And I think nothing can stop you nowadays, especially with the internet, that's the plus side of it. You can self-promote yourself and you can get out there and you have access to find all these incredible people around the world that you will probably connect to. And I just say, yeah, Bad stuff happens in life to everyone, it's inevitable, you can't help it, you can't control it, but never let that define you because you are just as worthy as the next person. Do you think going forward it is important for you to continue spreading this message like you are to more generations as they involve with internet more and, and learn more about um, everyday life, that you are not defined by your past, you create your own path, and that you know positivity is always the message going forward? Yeah, 100%. If I can do anything, it's just spread that message of just like, do not stress, life's life, bad things are gonna hit you, it's the way that you deal with them that defines you and it's the way that you move forward from those things. If anything, I'm, I'm thankful for some of the things that have happened to me because it's made me who I am today and maybe if I did have a smoother ride going on, I might not have been a nicer pers nice person or I might not have ended up in the job I'm in or whatever, like you just have to take everything as a lesson rather than a setback. How tough was it leaving Bristol at such a young age? It was tough, but I was also super, I don't know, as a 16 year old, I was really determined. Like I had my vision in my mind of what I wanted to do and where I wanted to be. And I was kind of like, I'm gonna do it. Mainly because I'd be too embarrassed to go back to Bristol and say, oh God, I failed. But also just because I didn't want to do anything else. And I think when you're so adamant about your dreams and you've got one focus, like you have tunnel vision almost and, and yeah. That's why I'm always like to young people, like if you have something that you're really passionate about, just do it. And especially in your teens, like when you're at school, you have all the room to mess up, all the room to fail and try again. You can have a million different jobs by the time you're 30 if you want to. And I just think, do it. The only thing stopping you is yourself, as cliche as all these things sound. So what was life growing up in Bristol like? How, you know, day to day at Cotton School, yeah. what, what were your friends like? How did you have, what was, a day, what was an average day in my Gemma's life at? At school, at 12 Cotton, years old, yeah. Um, at Cotton School, 12 years old, my jam is normal. Well, I'd go to school with a massive group of friends because I lived kind of on the hill on the way to Cotton. So it would be a crew of us that would go to school together. I don't know, I was like the class clown pretty much. I was never that ac academic, like I, I got through. I got enough grades to get into sixth form pretty much, but I wasn't like the smart one. I was more just like the silly fun one. Love drama, obviously Cotton, it specialised in performing arts, so it was perfect for me. And um, yeah, I had a really good a good childhood. I enjoyed school a lot. Like we had so much fun here. Everybody was lovely. I had students from all over the world. Like everyone came from a different background. It wasn't just one kind of person, which I think opens you up to the world a lot better because you have no surprises. You know how it is to come from that place and do that and da da da. And yeah, Cotton was good. I had, I had fun. What's your fondest memory of being a Bristol child? A Bristol child? I think my fondest memory of just growing up in Bristol is just like, it's small enough so that you know a lot of people and you feel a massive sense of community, but it's big enough that you're not on each other's toes and you're not in each other's faces and in each other's business. I feel like that's where it's got the perfect balance. And yeah, it was fun. It was just really fun. I was always used to say it's kind of like Skins, but like a bit more PG version. But yeah, no, it was good. If in one sentence you could sum up your message to young people growing yeah. up today, what would it be? Um, in one sentence, I would say my message is, Life's not always fair, but you can make the best of bad situations. And I'd say don't let anybody else's opinions or anyone else's views control your actions and do whatever makes you happy. I mean, that's like four messages in one, but yeah. Them all mixed together. Do what makes you happy, live your life and, and yeah. What's what's next? What can we expect what's to see? Next? I don't know, I kind of want to act now. Okay. Yeah, originally I wanted to be an actress and then I like fell into presenting because I felt like all the acting roles that I was taking on were just exaggerated versions of myself and yeah, presenting came naturally. But yeah, I wouldn't mind I wouldn't mind being in a few films and stuff now. But also just more stuff like this, like giving back. I've worked so hard over the past few years that I'm just like, it doesn't mean that much unless you can do things to help other people. So yeah, a bit more of that. Maybe see me in a film one day. As a West Country girl, are you going to be at Glastonbury this summer for, B for Radio 1? Yes, I'm going to be at Glastonbury. I can't wait. And obviously, Storms is headlining as well, so I'll be there with a the flag. <laughs> and that's the end of that. Yes. I know, it's like an actual song. Is it strange being 
kind of from where from where you were picturing yourself ten years ago to being you know part of a power couple on a global stage, having people yelling your name, taking hundreds and hundreds of selfies. Did you ever imagine it? <laughs> um, maybe not exactly. I didn't imagine that, but I did. I don't know. I did have a vision in my mind, like yeah, one day you're going to be that person. I uh, don't know why that American accent <laughs> jumped out, but yeah, I think I probably I hoped it would be like that in terms of just like having the dream job that I wanted and 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 being in a position where people well fortunate enough that people look up to you and stuff. But yeah, maybe not so specific of like having selfies and being in like some power couple thing, no. 